<laughs> What's up, guys? We are coming at you from inside the bus. How to solar wire ish today. <laughs> but the cool part is, is it's not just the two of us. We have a special guest, and he is going to give us the rundown and teach us all kind of shit today. So, so we, listen up. <laughs> yes, listen up. Let's get started. Who is this guy? What's up, y'all? My name is Jake, and um, I feel the same way that everybody else felt when I started Solar, and that it was some like magic harnessing the sun from a box and doing all this kind of crazy stuff, and it's actually just so, so super easy. So I wanted just to walk y'all through this and also um, Dustin and Tanya and just tell y'all that it's not a bunch of like snakes and monsters in a solar box it's actually just a lot of really easy straight up four wires type stuff um, and and also I'm gonna speak praises for Renergy because they make it easy um, and that's the kit that I'm speaking on that's the kit that we're speaking on today this is the 60 amp rover charge controller that we have here um, I've got the Wanderer in my van and I've installed other kits from Renogy. This would be the fourth kit that I've installed from Renogy and they just make it idiot proof. So if you're looking for solar, um, not only do they make really easy user friendly interfaces to interact with, but they also make a really good product. I had my solar panel fly off my roof and hit the highway and it didn't break. It was still there. I've stood on them while I was cleaning and knocking ice off of them. They're just really durable panels. and. Um, on top of being really durable quality panels, they also just make really friendly kits. So if you're looking for solar stuff, Renogy to me is, is the absolute way to go. And I'm sure there's a million other people that are gonna say that their stuff works for them. And I love that and I support that. And whatever you wanna do, it's your business, it's your vehicle. And you should have choice in that. But this is my opinion. And obviously Dustin and Tanya's opinion that uh, Renogy just makes good quality shit. So we're gonna install it. <laughs> Here we go. go. So. Um, I'll start out here. I kind of want to show this. Pause, yeah. pa get ready to pause. All right, so let's walk through this for a second. So this is for hooking your solar panels up in parallel. And one thing that I want to, to break down for y'all is that parallel keeps the voltage the same, but it ups the amperage. Um, running things in series ups the voltage and keeps the amperage the same. And when we're talking about charging batteries, charging batteries is all about putting more amps into the batteries to, to get a fuller charge. And this is a 12 volt system that we're gonna be running in this bus. That doesn't make sense for us to up the voltage into a 24 volt system. We're not gonna be running anything that's 24 volts in here, everything's 12 volt. So we're talking about running these in parallel because this is a, in, in all electronics, this is a principle. Parallel maintains voltage and ups amperage. And so that's what we're doing here is we're paralleling these panels together to keep the voltage the same and up the amperage. The ends of your solar panels in your energy kits will look like this here. You can see these are two different ends and they just snap together extremely easy. So there's not any need to put any crazy terminals on, they just snap together. And so what you would start off by doing is taking your solar panels, there's gonna be four cables that come off of these solar panels here, and you're gonna take the positive from one and the negative from the other panel, and you're gonna snap them together, right? So that's where we're gonna start. We've had, said we have four cables, we just connected two of them, that leaves two left. That is a master positive and negative that's connected to both of the solar panels. You just linked the solar panels by doing that, so they're linked. So that's done. So now we're gonna bring it into this case of the bus and that's gonna leave us a positive and negative that comes out from the solar panels. So then what? Well, then you've got your PV positive and your PV negative. And so these, should, these will be marked. If not, you can put a little piece of tape on it that will allow you to keep track of which is which. But on the panel up top, they'll be marked positive and negative. Again, the whole thing is a really simple process and it's marked all the way through. So you'll take your PV positive, your solar panel positive that's connected to both because we linked them in, pa in parallel, and you'll run it into here. And there's a little set screw behind this. It depends on which charge controller you have. This one's got the set screws behind here and it's just a little Phillips screwdriver. And you just pull it out and you slide the other end of the cable which will be similar to this, except for it'll be cut with, uh, you know, just the frayed wires hanging out. 
you'll slide that into there and you'll turn the set screw and it'll push it in together and now you have a positive and negative connection going into this but before you do any of that you want to be sure that you connect your battery positive and negative to this because otherwise you could damage your charge controller because all of a sudden you've got sun and power coming into this with nowhere for it to go so the first process in doing all of this actually doesn't even start at the solar panels it starts at the batteries so let's talk about the batteries for a second the same way if you're running one battery then it's very easy you just have a positive and a negative on one battery terminal in this case we're running a bank of two batteries and again we want those batteries to be linked the same way that we have the solar panels linked so these two boxes right here represent batteries and you can see here that we've paralleled them the same way that we paralleled these up here and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a positive and we're gonna take a negative and we're going to jump the batteries together. So again, we're going to complete the circuit. So we're going to take the positive from one battery and connect it to the negative of the other battery, right? So there we go. We've just made the connection for the batteries. Now we take the negative on one battery and the positive on the other battery, and then we run those into these guys right here. Battery positive, battery negative, and we'll link those up. So like I say, we'll do that first. Well, if you got two batteries, and this is the same case, if you've got 14 batteries, you're going to do the same thing all the way down the line. You're going to go positive to negative to positive to negative to positive to negative, and you're going to link all of the batteries together. Or if you've just got one, you've got one terminal. So you take the battery positive, and you take the battery negative, and you hook them into your charge controller. Now there's somewhere for the energy to go whenever you go to hook up the solar into the bottom of this. And y'all, that's really completely it. Everything else is going to be dependent upon the system that you have. So in this particular case, Dustin and Tanya are running an inverter for you know charging your laptop, whatever. And then they're also going to be running a fuse box so that they can hook up accessories to that 12 volt fuse box. So in this case, what we would do is we would take the positive off of one of the batteries and run that into the inverter. And we would take the positive off of that and run it into the fuse box. Am I making sense? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So that's going to be the power supply for our inverter and for our fuse box. Everything else can get its power from those two places. And the only other thing that we've left unhinged here is the negative connection. The negative connection is just about finding a common ground. A common ground completes the circuit. And we, when you think of uh, this entire process, you just gotta think of completing the entire circuit, right? So we've done that. We connected the solar panels together and we brought them into this, that's a complete circuit. We connected the batteries together and we brought them into this, that's a complete circuit. Now we have to do the same thing, but because there's not a pretty interface made by Renogy for this, we've gotta make our own complete circuit and we do that by finding a common ground. In this particular case, the bus is made of metal and any metal surface will make a fantastic common ground as long as it's connected to that same metal surface. So you could put this whole van is is metal sure so I could put a Common ground over here, and I could also put a common ground over here and because this whole thing is made of metal They're gonna be a common ground. They're gonna share the same complete circuit They're all gonna come together and coalesce into one. It's easier however to find a common ground bus and a bus is just a way for you to chain your grounds together, just to have one nice pretty place for all of your grounds in the event that you have to do any troubleshooting or in the event that you have to add in another accessory. So I want to show you all down here the, um, the situation we've got for our fuse power and we don't have a ground bus yet, but just imagine. So we're going to run the power from the battery into this block here. On this particular fuse box, this is going to be the input port for our positive power. But all of these here are just positives. We don't have a negative here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go get a bus similar to this and maybe put it right there, maybe put it right there, who knows. But we're going to take a ground bus and we're going to put it here and we're going to link our ground from this to the metal of the bus and that's going to give us a common ground. And then for all the accessories, we can just link positive here and when we have a ground bus here, then we can put the negative ground on from whatever accessory we have onto that ground bus. And that's it. That's a complete electrical circuit. So there's so electricity is not mystifying. The reason that a lot of people have an aversion to electricity is because it's not something you can see and it's not something that you can physically 
put your hands on and say this is what it is <laughs> without what I, hurting what, <laughs> what i what i like to tell people is that imagine the entire thing like water because the principles of electricity are just like water everything's got to flow everything's going to have specific areas that go you could think of batteries like a water reservoir right that's where we're keeping all of our energy stored is in that reservoir and you could think of the charge controller like a dam the dam is what regulates the power coming into our reservoir and think of the entire process like water as long as it all flows into everything as it's supposed to you'll have a nice ecosystem so that's what we're doing today we're gonna get to cracking on all this and uh, yeah hopefully that's helpful later Jesus. <laughs> you guys don't know how to do solar by now. You weren't paying any attention. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Jake, for the information and the tips. If you guys like this video, if you found it useful, please give it that thumbs up. Share some love in the comments below. If you have questions as well, put them in the comments below and we'll reach out to Jake if we have anything that we can't answer on ourselves. And he'd be glad to help, I promise. Exactly. Thank you guys for watching. Hey, I want to add something. Shoot. Um, so a lot of us spend a lot of time on the road or out camping or doing whatever and if you've gotten tired of listening to the same music or doing any of that please go to www.safana.world we've got so much music up there and it's a lot you know music from over 80 different countries and hundreds of different artists that you've never heard of so if you got bored and you're tired of listening to whatever you're listening to or you just want some art we do art up there as well please go to www.safana.world and get into some new music on your next road trip That's do you it. have anything else that you want to share what do you got going on you know I've got a podcast um, and you're more than welcome to go check that out season one is about to wrap so we've got eight episodes up it's called no fluff you can find it on iTunes or Spotify or really wherever you get your podcast it's no fluff with three F's N O F L U F F F and um, yeah I just go around and talk to people about the uh, the not so glamorous side of living in a vehicle um, and I also just talk to people about just regular you know no bullshit life um and that's what it's all about like i say there's there's currently eight episodes up there now i've got two more to wrap and then season one will be done but get into that too each episode's about an hour or so long and um uh, yeah if you enjoy it then that's good <laughs> yeah. so with that that's actually where we met jake and that's how we met jake is we we did a podcast and it ended up not working out but there might be one coming <laughs> shortly for sure. And yeah, go ahead and check out his podcast. There is some really interesting um, interviews on there, getting to know other people and the way that they live life on the road. Um, and as that. you have seen, like we've learned a lot from other people that we travel with or that we have met on the road. And this is like our community. This is how we reach out. He's helping us today. We'll, we'll help him another day. And, and that's how things work in our world. For sure. With that, thank you guys for watching. Love you.